And welcome uh, to the second half of the CEO Water Mandate Endorsers Meeting, which we have joined with the biannual partners meeting of the Wash for Work Initiative. Um, and pleased to have the opportunity to share our water sanitation and hygiene program with CEO Water Mandate Endorsers. And we invite you to engage. Uh, and a very warm welcome also to our Wash for Work members and partners who are, are just joining the meeting. Um, uh, we, uh, as part of our agenda um, over the next hour, if you could go to the next slide, um, please, Juliana. And while Juliana is doing that, for those that haven't met me, I'm, I'm Cheryl Hicks, uh, a senior advisor to the CEO Water Mandate and the Wash for Work Initiative. The Wash for Work Initiative is hosted by the CEO Water Mandate. Um, so our agenda over the next hour is, is to hear from um, our chair and, and, and vice chairs on uh, their reflections on the, uh, the current uh, agenda for WASH uh, as we lead into this important year, as mentioned by Jason at the, the beginning of the CEO Water Mandate um, meeting, and, uh, and also to announce our new leadership um, for 2023 and 2024. Um, we'll also uh, share with you the, uh, the work program um, that continues from 2022 uh, and the outlook and engagement opportunities for 2023. Um, we, uh, we will uh, have the opportunity to also hear from um, our, the lead organizations um, in the different uh, work program projects. Um, and uh, that includes Limnotech, uh, who will speak about our WASH benefits accounting work um, and the Water Resilience Coalition on Opportunities for WASH Collective Actions. Um, we will uh, finish the meeting by connecting back to the UN Water Conference, uh, which we've just been hearing about in the specific WASH for Work um, uh, initiative uh, events. And, uh, and then for those that are, are new to Wash for Work, um, uh, a, a quick uh, rundown of, of benefits, uh, member benefits, and, and how to engage. Uh, looking forward to the meeting. I'd now like to turn to Kate Holm from WaterAid, uh, who's been the Wash for Work chair from 2020 to 2022 to share her reflections on the current agenda for Wash. We recorded Kate in the uh, earlier time zone um, meeting this morning. How quickly it seems to have gone, but how enormous some of the shifts in that time have been. Um, we've seen such enormous things happening that companies have had to respond to and really adapt to, and particularly to really big challenges. Um, and I was thinking about those because it was literally months after Michael and I stepped into our roles that we saw the emergence of a global pandemic. Um, and that dramatically changed everything for everyone and had an enormous impact on business. Um, and at the same time, we've been seeing that growing challenge of how business should respond to climate change. So we've had these two big areas that have dramatically shown the importance of WASH to business and have really highlighted those links between WASH to business resilience and also to climate resilience. So it's been a time of really fast change and really exciting things happening within WASH for Work. We've seen companies increasingly engaging in WASH, increasingly engaging in WASH for Work, and we've seen our members really come together and lead on some very exciting and really thought leading pieces of work. Um, at the start of the time, we were mainly focusing on COVID and how business can respond to that and WASH for Work was pulling together some guidance for companies on those practical responses to WASH um, and their implementation they should be doing both in the workplaces and in the communities where their workforces were based. And then as we started to emerge from that, we shifted to looking more at climate resilient WASH. And of course, those other work streams coming in on um, the supply chains, and of course, the work that we're really excited about launching at the UN Water Conference on standardized reporting on the impacts of WASH so it feels there have been some really big things happening within Wash for Work. Um, I feel really proud of how far the coalition has come. It feels like we're really driving tangible progress now and some really tangible outputs. So it does feel like a very appropriate moment to be handing the baton onto our colleagues. Um, but before I do that, um, just to pass over to Michael to share some of his reflections. We now have Michael Alexander uh, from Thank Diageo, you, who's been the, and I think we have, here we go. 
Uh, hello, everybody. Chair, uh, it's work. Michael here. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts as outgoing co-chair of Wash for Work and uh, quickly reflect on just how much we've achieved over the last three years. It's been pretty uh, impressive uh, in the three years that uh, Kate and I have been chair. We've seen a lot of uh, really significant improvements. Um, and what, what would I highlight? I think we've managed to increase our membership, which is brilliant, of course. Um, uh, and, but also we're very focused on key work streams that are helping both engage more members and a wider group of members, but also a, improve our own technical delivery, working uniquely with our NGO partners and private sector companies. Um, and I think that's really important and the reporting and the impact of that. Uh, what, what I would say, if I reflect back on, say, you know, Diazu has been doing wash in our supply chains for about 20 years now, I think, um, there has been some very significant improvements and recognition, I think, of uh, of how important wash is as a fundamental part of water stewardship and water stress sites and water stressed areas and supply chains. And I think there's a greater and greater momentum behind this and recognizing how it unlocks so much more by the provision of safe access to water and um, sanitation and hygiene. And I think that's super important really is to get the fundamentals right in terms of getting more people recognizing how uh, you can't be doing uh, effective and credible water stewardship in water stressed areas where there is a risk and a demand for improved access to wash uh, without really focusing on wash and on the demand on the solutions and those solutions come working with expert NGOs such as water aid water dog Ward, and many others and and uh, and that's the uniqueness of this um, wash work partnership. It really is. It's both in terms of learning from the experts, in terms of implementation, and as I said, also uh, encouraging others to engage uh, very proactively in uh, and investing in wash in their own communities and their supply chain. So I think it's been super, super uh, impressive the amount of progress we've made, and I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of that. But it's nothing without the really strong secretariat that Cheryl's leading. Uh, but also, you know, the members themselves and engaging. And I think that's where I've seen quite a lot of difference is really members actively engaged in different work streams and contributing it and can see actually the value that it's bringing. And that's, you know, that's incredibly important. Without that, uh, we're not really achieving our objectives. Um, so what are my hopes going forward? I think um, in 2023 and beyond, <clears throat> I would just like to see that momentum continuing. I'd like to see more engagement from more companies uh, and more um, delivery by the existing companies. And that it goes for Diageo as, many, as much as any other company. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do. That's what our North Star is, is to get the scale and the pace and the technical um, delivery right for uh, improving access to wash to the 2 billion or so that don't have it. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm strongly encouraged by where we are. And I think we're we're very, very pleased to be handing over uh, to uh, Madhu and to Scott. I uh, wish them best of luck. Uh, I think we're handing it in good shape. <laughs> I would say that, wouldn't I? But I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, but there's so much more to do that we can do together by working through Wash for Work, um, working with our partners. And, you know, it, it excites me. And I'm not going away. Uh, I'll be on the back benches, as it were, but uh, supporting Scott and Madhu and individual work streams as well. And the Azure is committed as ever. But really to say a big thank you to uh, the Cheryl and the team at Wash for Work, to all the members for engaging and for making, uh, the, for contributing to the progress that we've made. And uh, as I said, there's, there's a lot more to do, but we're in a good place. And so with that, thank you. So big thanks to you um, and, and appreciation uh, to Kate Holm from WaterAid and, and Michael Alexander from Diageo, who have been the chairs of Wash for Work for the past three years. Strings, and getting so much energy from all of the members and, and getting us to such a... We, we had um, uh, an earlier meeting on the earlier time zones earlier today, so that's where some of our video feed is, <laughs> is coming through, but I think we'll get the um, original presentation um, back. Great. Thank you, Juliana. And now um, we have uh, an important announcement of our new leadership for uh, 2023 and 2024. Um, Madhu Rajesh from Coca-Cola and Scott McCready from Alliance for Water Stewardship are, are joining us as the chairs of Wash for Work. And um, we've asked Madhu and Scott to say a few words um, about their vision for Wash for Work in this term. 
Over you to you, Madhu. Thank you, Cheryl. And I'll start by um, saying, you know, it's very impressive the great work that Wash for Work um, has done over the past few years and the momentum that we have. Um, thanks to you, Cheryl, and, and, and the team for driving it forward the way you have. Um, Scott and I take over very big shoes from um, Kate and Michael that will be hard to fill, but we will try our best. Um, what excites me is really the, the uh, momentum that we currently have and the possibilities uh, ahead. So very much looking forward to working with you, the team, um, with Kate and Michael's support and with all the members to leverage this momentum in this um, in 2023, which is clearly a big year for WASH and 2024 and um, set the stage for future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madhu, and, and welcome. We're looking forward to your leadership um, in the next two years. And now we'd like to hear from your, your co-chair, Scott McCready from Alliance for Water Stewardship. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, thanks, Madhu. Um, I'd, I'd like to echo Madhu's comments on kind of thanks to Kate and Michael for the, the work that they've done in helping Cheryl accelerate. Actually, Watch for Work has been really inspiring and watching things progress over the last few years. Um, for those who don't know, know me, um, I'm Scott McCready. I'm Chief Strategy Officer at the Alliance for Water Stewardship. So AWS is a, a membership alliance of roughly 170 businesses, NGOs, government agencies aligned behind a sustainability standard system. Um, so that sustainability standard system, the, the AWS standard guides and verifies actions by business sites against five outcomes. So water balance, water quality, ecosystems, participation in governance, but also fundamentally um, extending access to water sanitation and hygiene and owned operations and in supply chains. Um, I'm actually in WaterAid today. I'm actually sat like about kind of two metres from Kate. Um, we are here for the AWS executive team meeting. Um, I'm particularly excited for this role because my water journey actually began at WaterAid. Uh, I worked in Kate's team for several years uh, uh, from the 2010. And WASH is a real passion for me, so this is a bit of a homecoming. Um, I'm particularly looking forward to supporting Cheryl and the team on WASH for Work's priorities. So scaling use of the WASH benefit accounting methodology, getting businesses behind the climate resilience WASH framework, and fundamentally getting greater action on WASH and supply chains. Um, I'll also be looking to leverage the strengths of the AWS system. So profiling Cheryl and team's work to the AWS members, and explaining how the AWS standard can complement all the initiatives that Wash for Work are getting behind. And ultimately, kind of we have a shared goal in securing more commitments and action on Wash. Um, the last thing I want to say is that if anybody, any of the members, have any ideas or priorities uh, that they want to share, please get in touch. Um, uh, get in touch with Cheryl, get in touch with myself, the Madhu. The scaling wash and private sector value chains is ultimately going to be a collective endeavour. Um, it requires efforts by businesses, but it also needs support from the NGOs and supports and incentives from the governments. And all of these things are kind of what wash for work can kind of help catalyse. Um, so as with all things SDG related, we can only make progress via collaboration. And that's fundamentally what I see the point of wash for work. Uh, so like I say, if, if Madhu or I can help in any way, please get in touch. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Scott and, and Madhu. Um, and now turning to uh, the, the rest of the agenda, um, uh, what are we planning for 2023? Um, what are some of the important learnings from, uh, from 2022? And uh, how can you engage um, in this important year for water? Um, so in 2022, Wash for Work updated its goals to reflect the changing landscape of water sanitation and hygiene access in the workplace, together with Wash expert stakeholders to support businesses um, on their wash, water stewardship journeys related to the Wash pillar. And uh, it, an important element um, uh, we feel is really amplifying business leadership. There's a lot of investment, a lot of action that you all are taking um, on Wash and um, Wash for Work is the platform to help you know, amplify that with stakeholders and, and share learnings. In addition, um, the Wash for Work initiative is, um, is working towards evolving best practice and, and standards, and, and you'll hear more about that um, as we go through um, the, the work program uh, for 2023. 
um, a, an important piece of that is, is strengthening the business case um, for your investments um, in WASH. And the uh, you'll see in, in a moment the um, the calls for acceleration from the global WASH community, um, which requires a much needed increased investment um, in WASH actions. Uh, and you need to uh, have a business case for that. And uh, we've been um, working on several strands of, of um, uh, financial ROI, for example, which you'll hear about in, in a moment. Um, one of the things that came out of our consultation in 2021 um, was the opportunity to leverage the WASH for Work platform to, um, con to connect members um, to, to scale up WASH action projects, both between um, peer companies um, looking to work together in collective actions, um, but also um, uh, connecting um, businesses and, uh, and WASH expert stakeholders for your implementation programs. And, and finally, um, a key goal has really been to um, both understand um, the new movements towards um, climate resilient wash from the um, the wash uh, global wash community uh, and uh, the role of business and in, in, in how to um, bring um, uh, the considerations of, of climate impacts um, into wash programming uh, and uh, you'll see that as part of the work program as well. So what have we achieved in, in 2023? Um, uh, we believe that significant progress has been made against um, these goals. Um, for example, uh, launching the um, WASH benefits accounting um, method uh, work, uh, which you'll hear uh, more about uh, from Lunotech today. Um, there was a call for more um, standardized reporting on guidance for, for WASH. Um, and we're excited about um, the, uh, the learnings that we can, we can gain um, from this tool and how it can also fit in with your, the broader uh, toolbox uh, of corporate water stewardship tools that we heard about in the CEO water mandate um, meeting just before. Um, in addition, um, we made great strides um, together, bringing business and, and our WASH stakeholder community um, together to um, build consensus around um, uh, the, the differences um, in WASH program being advocated by the global WASH community related to climate impacts and climate resilient WASH. Um, and uh, you'll hear about that in, in just a moment. Um, in addition, um, one of the areas of focus uh, that uh, the membership has identified is, um, is, is wash in the supply chain, which has continued to be a, a challenge um, for, um, for many companies. Um, and so we've uh, run a consultation in 2022 uh, to really understand how leading practice is evolving and how companies are addressing um, wash um, risks in their supply chains. Um, and uh, in addition, we have um, piloted uh, a supplier working group um, uh, to really support uh, suppliers in their own WASH implementation um, journeys, which we will be continuing in 2023. Um, and uh, as mentioned by Kate and, and Michael, really pleased to see many more businesses um, engaging in, in WASH and um, joining the platform to connect um, with leading practice and WASH experts. Next slide, please. At the COP27 Global Com uh, Climate Conference in November um, uh, last year, uh, 27 companies um, joined WASH expert stakeholders to launch the, the business declaration on climate resilient WASH, uh, really the demonstration of consensus on the evolution of leading practice um, standards. And this work will, um, will be uh, continued this year uh, in, in a working group, which uh, we'll get to in just a moment. And finally, um, we've captured our learnings um, from 2022 in a new report to be released in February titled New Expectations and Game-Changing Ambitions for the Water Action Decade, Accelerating Progress on Water Sanitation and Hygiene in the Workplace. Um, uh, we started uh, last year by uh, reporting on um, insights, uh, which was well-received and learnings um, throughout the year. And we'll continue to do that on an annual basis. Um, and uh, we, we thank all of you who have already input um, into the development of this insights report. Uh, and now in the next three slides, we'll share with you some high level um, key messages um, coming out of the report. In 2023, uh, as we've heard uh, just earlier, global governments and stakeholders will come together uh, on the important occasion of the UN Water Conference. And the expectations are high to forge much more ambitious commitments, to game changing actions for the Water Action Decade to 2030. It is recognized that progress on the global goals to achieve universal access to safely managed 
climate and climate resilience, water sanitation and hygiene still lag behind the 2030 targets and that at least a 4x acceleration will be required to reach just basic access. That's the uh, top layer you see in this, um, in this chart from the JMP. And even higher rates of acceleration for safely managed sanitation, um, water and, and hygiene access. Um, you'll see there um, a 30x uh, number under drinking water, uh, 9x under sanitation and, and 5x under hygiene. So there are now much higher expectations on business um, to help bring climate resilient solutions, to increase investments, and to extend corporate responsibility, traceability, and accountability for wash access beyond workplace operations to supply chains, employee homes, and communities. Next slide, please. So what is the status of wash access from a business perspective in 2023? More, um, uh, the, the, the risks for business are, are increasing. Um, more businesses are recognizing their exposure to unsafe and unreliable drinking water, sanitation, and hygiene uh, for workers at work or at home, and the material impacts on the business, um, its continuity and growth. And this comes via productivity losses, um, security of business critical raw materials, in addition to potential reputation, trust, and li license to operate risks. And climate change is already disrupting the quality and quantity of water supplies and the sustainability of sa uh, sanitation and hygiene behaviors, especially for the most vulnerable, setting back progress and causing need for reinvestment. New mandatory reporting, um, sustainability reporting laws, such as the EU CSRD, now in place as of January um, 2023, are increasing pressures on business to provide more disclosure on exposure to risks due to lack of access to wash and the actions businesses are taking to mitigate these risks. The price of wash risk has been calculated at 6 billion amongst just 10 global companies by CDP in 2022. And it's expected that new reporting and disclosure requirements will lead to increased investor pressure as well. However, uh, the business case for investing in wash is also getting stronger. And the business benefits of ensuring wash access are starting to become more defined going beyond basic compliance to unlock multiple benefits. Important links are being made on how wash access can contribute to corporate water stewardship commitments to improve water quality and quantity and corporate sustainability goals, including gender equality, improved health and well-being, education, climate resilience, and economic opportunities for communities. There is new evidence of financial returns um, for the business uh, investments on WASH as well. Uh, a study released uh, last year by WaterAid uh, revealed proof of positive returns um, in the form of increased productivity, reduced absenteeism, and overall health improvements. For every $1 invested overall um, delivered between um, uh, one to two um, average return and on the high end, five to $9 um, for every uh, $1 invested. Next slide, please. And finally, um, it, the opportunities uh, for uh, for business uh, in 2023 um, are um, uh, are profound um, to change the game and help to close the gap on wash access through the broad reach and influence of their workforces and supply chains. Yet, business achievements on wash. Um, are currently not accounted for um, in the WHO UNICEF um, Joint Monitoring Program measuring progress on SDG 6. Measuring collective business progress on WASH in the workplace through a standardized reporting method uh, that is being developed, um, and you'll hear about in just a moment, um, can demonstrate business contributions to closing the 4X plus gap. In 2023, the Washer work, um, work Program will focus on supporting businesses for these important shifts in new expectations and game-changing ambitions for water sanitation and hygiene access in the Water Action Decade to 2030. And so uh, the, with those highlights, um, on to the Washer Work Work Program 2023, um, uh, which will deepen its work in, to support companies in achieving WASH goals and commitments um, with uh, the launch of a standardized uh, reporting um, tool, uh, WASH benefits uh, accounting method, guidance for climate resilient WASH um, program implementation and building community resilience, and support to broaden WASH access across supply chains.
Next slide, please. And I see Nate has come on. Welcome, Nate, from, from Limnotech um, to take us through um, current progress on the development of the standardized um, WASH benefits accounting method. We're really excited about this um, and its launch at the UN Water Conference. Um, and there will be engagement opportunities um, uh, for companies to pilot the method um, following the, the launch. Um, and uh, alongside that uh, working group um, will be put in place to develop guidance, uh, a guidance document for its use and implementation, uh, in addition to um, advocating for broad use of, of the method and aligning with corporate water stewardship and wash disclosure reporting. And welcome also to Wendy um, from Lumen Tech. And I'd like to hand it over to you, Nate, to take us through the current progress on the method. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Cheryl. Thanks for the introduction and on all the great work that you're sharing about. Uh, yeah, thank you, Juliana. So. Uh, yeah, I'm Nate Jacobson uh, with Limnotech, and uh, pleased to uh, share about what, what we've been up to and, and where we're going with the standardized accounting method for the co-benefits of WASH project on behalf of the project team. So, Juliana, feel free to go down to the next slide. So, um, what you're seeing here is um, the WASH impact pathway that we've adapted from um, a lot of work that's been done by WaterAid and then also from the volumetric water benefit accounting methodology uh, from 2019. And um, this has really been used to uh, frame up our thinking as we're as we're thinking about um, accounting for and, and sharing about and quantifying um, benefits of, of projects. And um, you know, we we've we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of great work that, that many of you are doing and that has been done and um, including the volumetric water benefit accounting and, and 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 other things that that we're wanting to build off of. We're wanting to um, bring WASH more into that. We're wanting to provide additional guidance and um, just support for building the business case for, for companies that are investing in WASH. Um, and then also taking that beyond uh, just beneficiaries and looking at uh, people and uh, the broader outcomes and impacts. So today I'm going to stay um, generally uh, high level. We'll have more coming out in the coming months. Uh, I'll be providing some examples, but um, we expect to share more, uh, you know, coming up to the UN Water Conference. But as you can see here, um, we're really focusing on what are the activities that are relevant, what are the direct outputs that are that are resulting, and then looking at the the short, medium term, and then eventually long term outcomes and impacts of projects that can directly result, and then oftentimes indirectly, indirectly, indirectly result. Sorry. Um, which make it difficult to account for. So we wanna provide some support there. So uh, next slide, please. So this has a lot of text. Don't worry about reading it all. Um, we just wanted to frame out um, a little bit of, of what we're doing and how we've been thinking about this. Um, we, we've got some of the key categories here and, and some examples that are not inclusive of everything that will be in the final report, but um, we've really been working over the last six plus months with um, reviewing reports and work that has been done and also working with the project team and other stakeholders to really drill down on what activities are relevant, what, uh, what, how do we categorize and think about the different outputs, outcomes, and impacts that are resulting from this work related to WASH, and, um, and how, do I, how do we, what are the indicators, what are the methods to look at, um, what's already been done. And, and so as you can see, um, we've, we've started to classify activities based on, you know, water access, sanitation access, hygiene access, and institutional. Um, and within it each, we'll have a number of, of, of uh, different interventions that, that are relevant to WASH. And then as you move towards the right, um, there are, we've classified things based on socioeconomic, environmental, and, and institutional, um, with some examples of, of some of the outputs being, you know, simply the number of jobs created, the number of systems installed, the volume of water treated, number of people trained, um, which is a, a lot of what's currently being looked at, which is great. Um, but then we're also going to push this to the right to those outcomes and impacts, um, looking at improved health and well-being, and what indicators we can share with that. Looking at um, improved climate adaptation and mitigation or governance, um, and then also eventually pushing um, really towards the, the SDGs and and using those as important. Uh, benchmarks to, to aim for and to monitor based on. Um, if we go down to the next slide. So as part of this approach um, with the outputs and outcomes that we'll be sharing, um, we'll also include indicators and methods. Um, 
and identifying that you know not all are are, are equal and the same. We've uh, categorized them based on core and advanced, with core indicators being those that we really see and as really essential to monitor and report. They're generally common. They have relatively simple and cost-effective methods of calculation. Um, and these are ones we're going to really be focusing on, basing um, what we're doing on the, the VWBA report um, that hopefully many of you are aware of, and, and using that, that same kind of structure of uh, describing um, what activities these different indicators are relevant to, uh, providing equations and key considerations for the methods, what inputs and assumptions are needed, and eventually um, providing some case studies. Um, really building off the work that's been done from VWBA and then kind of adding in a, the wash flavor and, and pro, you know, providing more, more value there. And then the advanced indicators are ones that we see are um, maybe more narrow or, or have more complicated and resource intensive methods of calculation. And, um, you know, these are things that would be great to, to, to monitor and to report on, but not always going to be feasible. So we wanted to push those, provide some context um, in the report, um, more of a tabular format uh, with maybe pointing to other resources um, that are relevant, but want to also provide those as those have uh, value. So if you move on to the next slide, um, we have a few uh, example um, scenarios that we want to just walk through briefly and um, also not, not comprehensive, doesn't include everything, but just to give you a flavor of what does this look like? What will this look like in practicality um, for this example, you know, you're investing in infrastructure, capacity building and training uh, that results in uh, new access to a water source, for example, a well construction. Um, there's many other water access activities that we could look at. This is just one example. Um, some of the outputs that you might be considering would be number of new or improved groundwater wells, the volume of water provided, uh, the number of people trained, number of beneficiaries. Uh, and then it, you see at the bottom, really building off EWBA will provide guidance on how do you then calculate that volume provided, whether it's metering data or estimating it based on you know, capacity of the system or the number of beneficiaries. And we're really hoping to build out um, what has already been done with volume provided and, and add learnings from, from the work that you all are doing. And then also just additional guidance on how to incorporate um, whether it's water access or sanitation or hygiene um, and what kind of considerations and requirements um, revolve around those. And then as we look more towards the right to outcomes and impacts, um, you know, some of the outcomes, for example, might be improved wash access, improved health and well-being. Um, you can see in the middle on that table, um, the core indicator of the number of people with new or improved access to basic water service. And we really see that as a, a big ad there, really pushing, uh, pushing projects to understand who is receiving basic service, who is receiving improved safely managed service and providing additional guidance on what that means and what what that what that looks like based on the JMP and other other key resources out there. Um, and then for example, you know, for the improved health and well-being, we have that uh, prevalence and severity of water insecurity uh, indicator, which would be an advanced indicator where we'll you know point to the the water insecurity experiences scales, which provide surveys to help uh, monitor um, water uh, water insecurity and, and, and likewise aspects, um, and then eventually pointing to the um, SDGs as, as the ultimate impacts that we're driving towards. Um, next slide, please. Um, and so this is very similar looking at a sanitation example, um, for example, a new uh, wastewater treatment facility, some of the same outputs and outcomes, looking at the number of, of systems, looking at the volume of water treated, which again is from VWBA, but really expanding this out to have a more specific wash focus. Um, and then um, if you look to the to the far right on the table on the bottom, uh, you know, improved water quality is an outcome. One potential advanced indicator would be the proportion of domestic wastewater flows safely treated, comparing that before and after, um, you know, based on your community that, that is of interest that you're impacting with your activities. And then next slide, uh, hygiene example, improving access to hand washing facilities. Um, another key output is, is going to be the volume provided, but again, providing more clarity on what this looks like for, for hygiene and, and what, what kind of standard volumes can we look at when we're looking at beneficiaries or what kind of considerations do we want to take into account? Um, and then as we move towards the right, you know, similar outcomes, improved health and well-being, improved wash access, improved knowledge and awareness, and 
um, recommending you know different different ways to calculate that, whether it be surveys or um, globally globally available data. Um, we'll include that in the report. So if we move to the last slide, please. Um, so quick overview there. Um, more to come. Uh, you see, just for the for the method development, we're we're working on completing um, the methods and and developing this into a report, which we will be sharing with both our project team and then also a wider set of WASH stakeholders um, to get feedback, to uh, get their review. Um, you know, we've, we've done quite a bit of research and have quite a bit of experience, but really there's there's so much being done from uh, different NGOs, different companies. We really want to take into account how you would use this, what experiences you have, the type of activities you've 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 implemented and tried to, tried to calculate, tried to report on, um, and where we can provide value there. Um, with a launch at the water conference in March. Um, and then moving beyond that, we expect to pilot uh, a number of, of projects um, with the methods to develop case studies and just refine the, the methodology, and then also develop guidance for um, how businesses should use this standard. So um, you have my contact information and also Wendy Larson from the MOTEC. So, um, you know, we, we Hope this was helpful. We appreciate any feedback you have, and, and we look forward to uh, continuing to engage on this in the future. So uh, back to you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Nate and, and Wendy and, and your team um, uh, for this uh, tremendous progress um, on this tool. Really important, um, you know, to to demonstrate uh, accountability towards um, uh, water stewardship and, and wash commitments specifically. Uh, really excited about this. And again, the engagement opportunity there for all of you is to be part of the review process um, leading into the launch. Um, so you'll be hearing from us very shortly uh, for that input and then to engage in the pilots and, and guidance development. So thank you very much. We're uh, just um, uh, coming into our final 15 minutes. So we'll, we'll press ahead um, if that's okay with everyone um, on the other uh, work program um, priorities for, for 2023. Um, so we will move forward our work on climate resilient wash um, from uh, the launch of the business declaration um, last year to develop implementation guidance in partnership um, with WASH expert stakeholder members and, and really pleased with the response here and support um, for this work. Um, and, uh, and so we, uh, we will uh, quickly um, launch a, a working group to, to get this work um, underway following this, this meeting. Um, so we look forward to your, your engagement um, in this work, uh, important work going forward. And the other opportunity that we wanted to present today um, is the, the opportunity to pilot this climate resilient wash framework um, uh, via collective action projects. And so pleased to have Andre um, from the Water Resilience Coalition to talk about a current wash collective action opportunity. Hello, thank you, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. Um, pleasure just to see some of you that joined for the Wash for Work and others that were in this previous CEO water mandate session. I think this is, um, this is a good reflection on what we're trying to do uh, in terms of collective action and the Water Resilience Coalition and exploring new opportunities. Um, we're kind of have this, um, putting ourselves this challenge of, of providing uh, positive impact in a hundred basins as we previously mentioned. Um, and we need to find the best mechanisms to, to explore and find solutions that will help get us there. And one of the, um, one of the good ideas that we have in order to uh, explore great opportunities and expand them was to kind of use the experience from our members and projects that they have already developed and, and turn this uh, from a, an initial bilateral partnership into a collective action. And this is exactly what we're looking for to do with the Women and Water Alliance that is started um, within, the, within a partnership with the USA and, and GAP. Uh, which reach out to 2 million people. So it's a very successful uh, project. Uh, and I know that Alison is here uh, that can attest to it. Uh, so it's, um, they invested a lot of time. They built all the, all the connections. They brought in great partners like water.org, WaterAid. Uh, there's multiple partners. Um, uh, and they built out this great program that allowed them to get to these 2 million people. And what we, um, start talking to them is that, well, but can we expand this now that this specific bilateral partnership is ending? 
should we just uh, let it go all this great effort and all these connections or should we kind of improve the game and bring more companies to it so we can expand uh, over something that was, was built throughout the, the, the last year, uh, last five years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is what we decided to do. So we, uh, we invited the gap, we invited WaterAid, we talked, and uh, we're in a, currently in a design phase where we talked to multiple companies about what it would take for you to join this project and, and to be part of this. And so we can increase the dimension and move on to this uh, five to 10 million ambition by 2030. Uh, so this is uh, the program that we're designing. I think that we, we have a, 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 another slide. It's, uh, it's do not have like a, a specific focus right now in, in those areas that we mentioned. This is where the project uh, uh, had its previous impact. We're looking for understanding uh, ways of increasing not only the impact in number of people, but new, uh, new areas too that might you know, aggregate com companies. Uh, this initial work was kind of focused on some areas that make sense for Gap and its great supply chain. It's of course, it's an area that, it, that we identify as having a common ground with a lot of other companies from other sectors, but there's a potential to increase this. And this is a great opportunity for us to kind of pilot test what would be a great collective action from WASH starting from the ground we have in terms of not, not the ground, I mean, we have a great baseline, but on the ground in terms of, of collective action, meaning understanding what the company needs in terms of information back, connection to their current targets and everything else uh, that makes it important for the companies. So this is what we're doing right now. And we're putting it, as I say, in this design phase where we have the local teams from, from WaterAid, which is helping us in terms of, of project managing this, managing this effort. Uh, they are using their local team and local knowledge of the previous experience to kind of build out a program that will uh, be attractive to all the other companies. And we are expanding this. The notion is not um, have this tie to the Water Resilience Coalition specifically, but being able to open this uh, to a public audience so the other companies can, can participate. So there's part of this discussion. There's also... Uh, the delivery of co-benefits beyond WASH. So the idea of replenishment, uh, tracking economic in, uh, empowerment and all this great work that was previously mentioned of how to explore the multiple benefits of a WASH initiative. And we have a chance to do all this from start. Uh, this, me this measurement, right? Um, thank and we're thank doing you, this Andrei. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry to jump in. Thank you. Um, I can go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a, a great opportunity, I think, for, for what Washer Work members um, also looking to engage uh, with other companies in, in projects to scale up their efforts. So thank you, Andre. And apologies to cut you off a limited time, but um, uh, many of you have asked to share this uh, presentation and um, Andre, perhaps we could share a little more information about the, this opportunity also with Washer Work members. So our, our third focus area um, in 2023, uh, wash in the supply chain, um, uh, it was um, uh, suggested by the, the companies that were part of the consultation um, last year that we develop a leading practice vision um, for wash in the supply chain to really reflect the current context um, uh, of, uh, of businesses um, really looking to um, increase their actions and decrease their exposure um, to, um, to uh, unsafely managed um, wash in, in their supply chains. And, um, and for, for this work, um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, we're currently working on a, a mapping exercise. Um, and we think this fits nicely also with the work that you heard of from Hannah um, earlier in the CEO water mandate um, meeting. If we could go to the next slide, um, please, Juliana. Um, we're mapping the size of the, the wash gap um, by country uh, via uh, available data um, of our wash expert partners um, with corporate supply chain exposure to identify uh, potential collective priorities for actions um, and, and targets um, and support of, um, of suppliers in, in common. Um, and this will also serve as a baseline um, for measuring um, collective progress. Um, and, uh, and, and so this is a, a mapping exercise that we are looking to have complete um, for the UN Water Conference and, and then be able to 
um, uh, discuss in the in the working group um, the, the priorities and uh, and support needs uh, going forward. Um, so uh, really looking forward to um, to moving forward some of this uh, work on on washing the supply chain, building on the work um, that you've already been doing, and and really trying to optimize this opportunity for uh, really increasing impact and accelerating um, uh, wash access um, through the supply chain. A great opportunity. Thank you. Coming to the, the close of the, the meeting, um, we wanted to, to leave you with um, some practical actions um, for how to engage. And uh, we've made some suggestions here um, for those of you that are new to Wash for Work or um, those of you that uh, are new to, new, um, uh, to the uh, work of Wash. Um, we're suggesting that uh, you uh, join our working groups uh, to integrate climate resilient wash considerations into your wash programming um, as the uh, future direction of leading practice um, and, and also to extend uh, leading practice requirements to supplier contracts and codes of conduct. This is what has come out of the uh, consultation on um, the evolution of, of WASH um, in the supply chain uh, consultation of, of last year and, and will be continued focus of the working group um, this year. Um, to uh, align your WASH access measurement and reporting with the, the new um, standardized WASH benefits accounting method that you just heard about from Limnotech, and which you'll receive more information about and will be launched at the UN Water Conference, um, and to share annual progress reports um, with WASH for Work to enable um, monitoring of collective business contributions um, towards SDG6 and get recognized um, uh, for, your, for your efforts. Um, so, Going to the next slide, um, we'd like to uh, share with you our uh, calendar for the year uh, and the specific engagements um, at the uh, UN Water Conference uh, that Washer Work is planning. Um, if you weren't part of the uh, earlier meeting, um, perhaps I can ask Ilsa just to um, give us a quick overview of what we're planning in terms of communications and events. Is Ilsa there? Okay, uh, in the interest of time, um, Ilsa, when, when you, um, uh, until you can come on, on, uh, on screen, I, I'm happy to take you through this, this overview. Um, as mentioned, we will have a launch of our 2022 Insights Report in February at the UN Water Conference. Um, the focus of our communications and events will be the launch um, of the standardized accounting method um, on WASH benefits. Uh, at World Water Week, um, our, our focus of communications will be around um, uh, the work being done on WASH in the supply chain, um, uh, the business vision and leading practice guidance. And in December, uh, for the next uh, climate um, meetings, we will, um, we will share the business guidance being developed on climate resilient WASH. All opportunities um, for you to engage and the goals of our of our work together um, preceding those those opportunities and for the UN Water Conference um, we're planning an evening reception on March 21st to launch the wash benefits uh, accounting method more details to follow um, kindly hosted by WaterAid um, and Diageo and I think some of you are, are also interested in in hosting um, co-hosting this event uh, alongside um, wash for work and we will then have a, a practitioner workshop where we'll go into more detail in uh, how to apply the WASH benefits accounting method um, and um, an introduction to those companies looking to pilot the method this year. Um, dates are still to be confirmed, uh, as many of you know, um, but uh, we're targeting the 23rd or 24th of, of March for your planning. We look forward to seeing many of you there. As indicated in the, in, in the previous meeting, it, it looks like many of you are planning to be there. And next slide, please. I'd like to invite um, Mylan Ha for some final comments um, on uh, linking us back to the, the, the broader business engagements um, in the water conference and opportunities for Wash for Work. Yeah, so um, as, as Cheryl mentioned there, there was already the, um, so for, for the, the, the events in March that was um, very clear, Cheryl, you know, as, as as the first part of this meeting was really calling out, we're really looking to drive a, a ambitious collective action in basins. The example as, as Andre um, showcases one of those examples and there's a great opportunity now to really elevate 
really to move from just commitments to direct actions and opportunities here. So um, as in this slide, there's, there's, there's work to be done, right, in terms of of engaging in a wash work partnership that is a platform for businesses as, as uh, in, in this to really work together, to be recognized for, for the work that they're doing already doing on wash and to actually accelerate this, this further, um, working collaboratively with other corporate peers and wash organizations, and really looking to see, as you've seen the documents we, we've sent through, wash is really integrated in, in its core to a lot of the, the, the business call and the collective action work and so forth. And therefore, we would really like it for WASH work members and partners to be really engaged throughout this process, through the partnership, um, and then through that, through supporting the open call and having it really be part of the global agenda on, on, um, on water overall. So I think this is a critical pillar. Uh, we need to do more on this and really looking to engage with the, with the members um, of WASH work in the implementation across these elements. Thank you, Mylan. Um, and thank you to uh, everyone, a uh, final, slide here on, on how to engage. Um, we're looking forward to uh, working with all of you uh, this year, um, a critical year for, for water and, and really pleased um, uh, about the increased actions on WASH and, and, and the opportunities to help close um, the gap identified by um, the Joint Monitoring Program on SDG 6. Thank you, everyone, and uh, good day, good evening, and good afternoon.